Two people who currently live together are about to attend church, have a party, go on a short holiday, then carry on living together. What's big about that? Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and quite possibly the greatest episode of Sherlock ever just aired. So this is going to be my review. Since a lot of you might not have seen it yet, I'll try and keep out as many spoilers as possible. I'll also be taking questions for my Q&A video tomorrow. Be sure to subscribe to get it. If there's any questions you have specifically about Sign of Three, just post them in the comments and I'll include it in my Q&A video. And just like this weekend, I'll post my breakdown video a couple days after I post that Q&A video. Just like my last review, I'm going to do my top five moments and then I'll do my review. So we gotta keep this stag party on schedule, so let's get started. Number five, the editing in the story. Normally I talk about specific parts of the story, but there was this incredible way the story was told in several different scenes, even when Sherlock wasn't in his mind palace. I love how Sherlock essentially shows you the end result first, and then rewinds to show you how everyone got there. Like learning how Sherlock became Watson's best man while he was in the middle of his wedding speech. They've done mechanical things like this with the story for a long time, but something about this episode and the bright colors of the wedding, juxtaposed with the drab colors of Baker Street, just made it feel like you were jumping down the rabbit hole of Sherlock's past. The whole time the joke is all on Sherlock and it's so much fun. They made fun of him on the show in the past, but in this episode, it's like Sherlock walking right into a face full of pie, and it was amazing. Number four, Sherlock's stag party. Watching the writers explain to us what Sherlock and Watson would do at a stag party was amazing. It's a fair question. What would those two do if one of them had a stag party? The general decline of the evening into what ended as the funniest case they've ever attempted was just brilliant. I am totally inviting drunk Sherlock to my stag party and we are going to solve the shit out of some cases. Number three, Sherlock's wedding speech. It's a wedding episode and of course Sherlock was always going to be the best man. So there was always going to be a Sherlock wedding speech. But first, watching a side character get her own montage was so much fun. And two, the comedy of Sherlock's actual speech was so much funnier when it got tied up with the greater murder mystery of the episode. It was like having a conversation with someone while they're flipping channels on the television, just constantly jumping from story to story in time and space, or in time and, you know, Sherlock's mind space. Number two, Mind Palace Internet Chat Room. So let's not try to spoil this too much for people who haven't seen it yet because a very notable character makes an appearance inside the Mind Palace. But just from a production standpoint, seeing the camera jump back and forth between the real world and this really big set that looked just like an orchestra pit was so clever. It was almost like Sherlock was conducting a symphony in his mind while carrying on this conversation with all these chat room women. I was also really impressed at how they visualized Sherlock imagining each woman changing in real time as a result of the answers that they gave him in this chat room. Of all the scenes that they filmed in this episode, I have a feeling the Mind Palace scene took them the longest to film, just because there were so many characters and so many different bits of dialogue that were combined. And my number one thing about the episode, Soul Man Sherlock. So without going into the plot or the more specific details of the episode, a lot of people's complaints about Sherlock being a dick in episode one are largely answered in this episode. We actually learn a couple new things about his personality and they place him in this much, much warmer context as a character. If Mycroft is the barometer for coldness, then Sherlock just became so much more precious to the fandom. Just to give you an idea, Tumblr exploded after this episode, much more so than any other episode of Sherlock previously. Overall, this episode was actually my favorite episode so far, but just to give you an idea how I place series three in the greater context of the show, so far, each new episode has been my new favorite. I don't think that episode three will be able to match the, you know, preciousness of this episode, but there is a good chance that it could be an even better episode. They've done such an amazing job this season, so it's no surprise that this episode was a home run for the fandom. As I mentioned earlier, the way the story was told was so much more fun, jumping around in time and space so much, mostly because the filming locations just look so distinct. The way they use music with some of the visuals was also very creative. I don't want to spoil it too much, but there are a couple scenes where the Sherlock theme plays to some very great comedy. There's even some dubstep sequences. To put things into context, the stag party in the wedding could have just been used to have a lot of fun, but each moment was really true to the characters and in service of this larger murder mystery storyline. The episode even helped me on a practical level. I just found out which game I'm going to play the next time I have a party. Guess below in the comments what I'm talking about. Also, be sure to let me know what your favorite moment was. I know almost every single moment was a favorite moment, but try to pick your most favorite. And don't forget, I'm taking questions for that Q&A video. Write them in the comments. Right now, click here for my breakdown of episode one, Empty Hearse, and click here for my review of that episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. High fives.